A top health ministry official is now warning that these social distancing rules are expected to last until at least the summer and could get worse before they get better. Now, at the same time, reports are indicating that police will not take action against individuals who venture outside their homes despite the strict rules, but will rather go after businesses, um, you know, and business owners. Uh, but, you know, with all these regulations in Israel, the unemployment rate has skyrocketed to 16.5 percent in Israel from a mere 3.6 percent in the fourth quarter of last year. And over 500,000 people uh, have lost their jobs since the start of March. And on Wednesday alone, 66,000 Israelis filed for unemployment, actually causing the Employment Services website to crash. Now, the cost of unemployment benefits is expected to reach $523 million in April up from around 220 to 250 million per month. Now, we've been speaking nonstop about the implications of the coronavirus, but not so much about the illness itself. So what is the coronavirus and how long is it going to last? Joining us now in the studio or on Skype with the details is Professor of Immunology and Virology at the Tel Aviv University, Dr. Jonathan Gershoni. Thanks for joining us. Now, in the past, viruses like SARS disappeared relatively quickly. Can we see um, that that is, is that also going to take place right now with this virus? Uh, well, unfortunately not. Uh, these are both coronaviruses and actually genetically very similar. However, their behavior and their infectious pattern is quite distinct. In SARS, the original one, it was transmitted only when there were clear symptoms, coughing, fever, and so on. And with this new virus, uh, it turns out that asymptomatic, people who do not have symptoms, can continue and actually spread the disease. So it becomes very difficult to implement social distancing because half of the people who are infected don't even know they are infected with this devious virus, if you will. And how long do you think this is going to last for? I mean, what, what is your guess? Well, uh, obviously, when a functional vaccine is discovered, then we will have uh, general protection. But until then, social distancing is absolutely necessary because we want to try to, in as much as possible, reduce the rate of infection and therefore flatten the curve, which we've all heard about in the last, last weeks. Now, when it comes to the spread of this disease, how, I mean, what is the, the most likely way in which you can catch it? Is that through touching services in which the virus lives, um, or is that through, you know, airborne particles? Well, the uh, micro droplets, if you will, when mm -hmm. you sneeze, cough, and so on, is the most direct way of uh, transmitting the disease. People who are infected, they cough and they spread through airborne micro droplets. Mm -hmm. There has been some comment about the viability, the ability to catch from surfaces. So this can exist, but for that, of course, the best way to prevent that is to wash your hands uh, methodically with soap. I don't know if you have to sing happy birthday or other songs, but this is certainly a very effective way. Uh, hand hygiene is really important. Now, talk to us a little bit about the development of a vaccine. The World Health Organization said that there are 20 vaccines worldwide that are, that are currently being developed, but what is the timeline on that? Well, unfortunately, the timeline will take at least a year, if not two years. Uh, and most of the vaccines that have been reported are variations in what had been attempted for both SARS and MERS, previous coronaviruses, which haven't been very successful. So uh, there is a systematic method of developing a vaccine. It has to go through clinical trials. This all takes time. So it's excellent that there are attempts, but this is not going to relieve the problem in the immediate future. Now, are there any long-lasting effects from the coronavirus? And, and people who recover from it, are they therefore immune or can they still infect others? Well, these are two very good questions. First of all, I have to emphasize I'm not a doctor. I'm just a scientist. Right. But as far as damage to the lungs, it's been reported that people who have recovered do uh, have some sort of scar tissue and damage to their lungs. Okay. Uh, it's also interesting to point out that one of the risk groups are people who have previously smoked. So again, smoking here again is a serious uh, disadvantage to those who want to recover. Uh, so this is uh, certainly 
a, a problem and has to be considered. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor. And I know that you are giving Pleasure. a free online course on the subject, you know, about how to uh, learn more about viruses and beat them. So uh, everybody check out his work. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.